In today's video, I entered in my first ever official Edison tournament. I'm here at YCS Indy. I'm actually playing in the Edison event. I just woke up, sounds like it. I know it's the middle of the day, but it doesn't start till one, so. Let's get to it. So normally I do a vlog for this kind of thing, but I was only there for like one day and you'll see why I just didn't get a ton of footage. So it's a little bit of a different video because I did want to update you guys on what happened. And what happened was I played in a tournament. The tallest man in the business, sassy underscore auto. Wait, is it an underscore? Nope. Sassy underscore auto. There's nothing under except everything. He's above it all. Oh man. Sassy auto. What did he get? A milkshake? Just a Coke Zero. Oh, okay. Yeah, staying healthy. I like it. Hey, I got a question for you. Would okay. you be down to sign my mat? Sign your mat? Yeah, bro. Let's go. All right, you got a you got a Sharpie on you? No, I don't. Uh, <laughs> I, don't have a or, or, or. I really don't play Yu-Gi-Oh that often. I've played in two YCSs before. I've literally never played in a local still. I've entered once, I dropped, and then got the OTS pack so we could do the every pack opening the first time. That's the only time I've been to locals for an actual tournament. So this was a little unusual for me because the two YCSs I did was in early 2022. So it's been like over a year, probably a year and a half since I've entered in an official tournament. I've done a couple of side events since then, but those are like eight person tournaments. So they're pretty small. So the reason I wasn't at YCS Indy as long is I originally wasn't even even gonna go to this tournament. The only reason I went to this tournament is because it was actually close to me. It was like four and a half hours, something like that. Technically it was four hours and 20 minutes. So do it that way you will. But normally it's like seven hours. It's on the West Coast. I have to fly, you know, so I have to make all these plans. But this time I was like, you know, I could just drive up there. I don't really have to make a plan or anything. And I ended up procrastinating a lot and not even getting a hotel room. So then I was thinking, I guess I'm just going to skip. You know, I'm not going to go. Then Sassiato, the legend, was like, hey, I know that uh, I know that Ethan has a spot in his room. So Ethan, if you guys know him, Celestial TCG is a really good guy. So I ended up staying in a room with them. He's like, I was like, OK, look, if I've, they've got a spot for me. I can drive up there and make it nice and easy. And I decided like last minute, all right, I'll go to this thing but there was a problem the age of overlord release was that weekend so i had to do the live stream at some point normally i would do it on saturday but that's when the tournament was so i decided i'll move it up to friday we did the live stream early on friday but then i had to do that four and a half hour drive afterward but i also had to sell my card so i posted everything on tcg player real quick i did all my ratios for twitter go follow me on twitter at ruxon34 is it called twitter anymore what's it called x x go follow me over there i guess it's a pretty crappy platform, but I do put some cool stuff on there. And speaking of putting stuff on there, I actually put all of my round updates on there. So if you want to follow me, if I ever do another round again like this, you won't have to wait for the video. You can see how I'm doing live at the tournament. Hey man, yeah, I got ghost in the past. Don't put my boy Ruxin. Yeah, you can, uh, I'm going to bring some luck right now. Yeah, man, let's hopefully go. he gets the dark magician. That would be, <laughs> that would be insane. We're going crazy if that happens. Here we go. Okay, three different artworks here. There's two of these, so I'm going to go with this one first. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get a ghost room right now. It's gonna be insane. Sunbind Shrine. This is gonna be at. Oh, that's a decent card. We got Splash. We got Metaphors. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, okay. I'm just saving it for the end. Okay, okay. I'll get both firewalls. Here we go. This is it. Sunseed. It's Dragoonity Draft. Air to Dragon. Let's go. Time Thief. All right. Come on. Oh, oh. Right. Last okay. pack magic. Last pack magic. This is it. This is it right here. Last pack magic in the comments Ruxin right now. Special. Ruxin special for no rucks and specials. <laughs> We're going straight for the card. Here we go. Metaphors Mithrilium. We have Metaphors again. Oh, it's a synchro. Could still be a ghost. Yeah. Crystal wing. Ah, oh, it's not. <laughs> really also. When you leave from where I live to Indy, you actually end up in Eastern time. So it was four and a half hours, plus there's an Eastern, you know, Central to Eastern. So I have to add an hour. So it's basically five and a half hours. Then I stopped a few times, you know, I had to get some cookies, had to get something to eat, you know, all that different stuff. So I didn't show up till like 11 p.m. So normally if I'm flying out to a YCS, I've already been there on like Friday, like early Friday, I'm trying to get there. So I've already missed the entire Friday, which normally I would be getting a ton of footage for the vlog and stuff like that, but I wasn't even there. And by the time I get there, everyone's like, yeah, I'm going to bed. I got to get ready for tomorrow and I'm like I guess I'm going to bed too so I basically got I don't think I got a single video on Friday 
And I also had to submit my deck list, which normally you would have to submit by like early Friday for the main event. But because this was the Edison tournament, it wasn't actually the main event, but it was a real tournament or whatever. I think it was capped at 256 is what they said their max was, which by the way, it didn't go that high. And we'll talk about why that happened later. There's a few things that I want to cover about this Edison tournament in this video. So I entered my deck list, which by the way, I don't do this very often, but it is a tedious process. You have to like type it in, then click on the right one, then click quantity, then type in the number of quantity, then make sure it actually pops up and you didn't miss anything. I missed something. I had 39 in my main deck and I had to go back and like, what did I miss? So I had to go back and find it. So I know all you guys who play in regular tournaments are like, yeah, this guy's a rookie, but I feel for you guys. That's really annoying. I hated doing that. And after doing that, I realized that the Edison tournament didn't actually start till 1 p.m. Central. The main event starts at like nine. I think you get there at nine. It starts at 10. This thing didn't start till 1 p.m. So me being me, I was like, okay, I guess I'll just, uh, I'll wake up at some point. It was 10 o'clock and the other two people in my room were still asleep. So I was like, eh, I guess I'll wait for them. I wake up at 12 and I'm like, oh, it's an hour before the tournament. I better get going. So I get up, you know, I'd taken a shower the night before I fixed my hair real quick, grab my bag, head out. I was thinking, I think I was about to check in before now. I get there, apparently check in was at like 1030. And I'm thinking, oh no, I'm gonna get dropped. I'm here for nothing. You know, I'm not even gonna get to play. I hear an announcement. There are still 20 Edison players who have not checked in. I was like, that's me. That means we're still good. So I run over to the place where you can check in for, they call it like ultimate time wizard, I think is what they call it. Because I guess the ultimate means that it's like the real tournament versus the side event, which is just be like, Time, time was a 2010 or whatever. So I go over, I'm like, oh, I'm here to check in. They're like, oh yeah, you're good to go. An hour before the tournament. I was like, that's kind of a bad sign. I don't, I don't think there's that many people playing if I'm already able to check in right before it starts. It was 25 bucks to play, by the way. I just, I don't know if that's a standard one for Ultimate Time Wizard because they just started doing these. So I got my five packs of Duelist Nexus, which by the way, I opened and here's the video. I entered into the Edison event. I get five packs. Of course, it's Duelist Nexus. It couldn't have been Age of Overlord. Other magicians and bonds and unity. That's the only thing I want out of here. Let's see what we can get. All right, come on. We're just straight up going in right here. It's got the, I can't read these cards upside down. Hound of the Testina. Those are usually terrible, so not a great start. We have five packs, five, four chances now. I've opened one. Come on, we have the, oh, what is this? The, the Coddle? We got a Synchro. Ibelzar, we, oh, the retrain of the animal guy. Oh, a Tistina again, all right. <laughs> okay, this, it's an ultra. It's an ultra rare, we'll take it, I guess. Oh, okay, all right, three packs left. We've got an ultra, all we need is a secret and a quarter century secret rare, and then we have everything, so. That's what's gonna happen right here. Secret first, no, nope. okay, secret after this. So I got two packs, it can still happen. Duelist Nexus, killing it. Edison, you're not really coming through for me right now. I'm just saying. You're supposed to give me something good. Oh, is this the, are these the only archetype in this set? Because that's all we're pulling. Okay, there it is, last pack. This is the one. This has the bonds in unity. The green background. I have not gotten this one yet. Here we go. Come on, Edison. No! Nah! <laughs> all right, all right, we tried. We at least got an ultra. So as you saw, we got our own injury packs. Not that crazy. I mean, Duelist Nexus, why is it Duelist Nexus? Why is it not Age of Overlord? The set had come out this weekend. It needed to be an Age of Overlord. I mean, Duelist Nexus is garbage. Age of Overlord would have been lit. So it was unfortunate to have to open that, but it was still cool to get something. I opened them up, didn't really pull anything. So maybe we'll get that Magician's Bond of Unity at some point. So at this point, it was a waiting game. I waited till one and we waited a little bit more. I'm like, okay. And they finally post the pairings. So what they did was they stuck one piece of paper on a wall and we're like, all right, here it is. And everyone just like swarming to it. So there's people, I'm just standing back there like, I guess I'm just gonna wait. People are just up there like, oh, where's my name? People are like, take pictures, take the picture of the thing. So people are taking pictures, but they're sitting there like line it up, and like hurry up. You know, people are going crazy. So I finally get up there. I get to see where I am. I go to my first pairing. And by the way, there was only 72 matches at the beginning. So it looks like there's only 144 players, which I think is because nobody knew this Edison tournament was going on. I actually only knew this was happening because I was talking to Simo like a day or two before I was leaving. And he's like, oh, you're playing in the Edison tournament? I was like, what Edison tournament? He's like, they're doing Edison, Ultimate Time Wizard at this event. I was like, really? He's like, yeah, they announced it like one day ago or something. So a ton of people didn't know about it that would have gone for Ultimate Time Wizard 
if they had announced it a little bit earlier or like actually made it well known. So that was a little sad. I mean, 144 is still a lot of players and it was still super fun, but they definitely could have capped at 256 or whatever it was if they had actually like promoted that they were doing Edison at this event. Okay, let's get to the first match. So after waiting quite a while, I finally got to actually play a match. So I sit down. I actually did bring a mat this time. Half the time I forget a mat and have to like buy one or borrow one or not even use one or something. I brought my original one from our videos where it was the zombie madness and the uh, red eyes darkness dragon. It was pretty cool. A lot of people were like, ooh, that's cool, Matt. It didn't, it was no spell ground, but it was pretty classic. The first guy I sit down against, he's super chill. He's super fun. He's like, uh, he's there to like watch the Browns and Colts game. So him and his friend are there just like to have fun at the Edison event and then go to the football game the next day. So I personally was playing my Diva Hero deck, which I've had for like two or three years. I'll show you guys, but the list at the end, it's probably the same as the first time I did the video. I've upgraded a few like rarities and stuff, but I sit down with that. He sits down with a Dark Dragons deck is what he called it. I don't know if that's the official Edison name, but basically he was trying to get Red MD out, the uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. He had a Red Eyes Wyvern in his deck and it was actually a pretty fun match. The first game was pretty back and forth. I honestly have not played a lot of Edison over the last couple years, and there's been some developments in new decks and stuff like that, so I've never played this deck that he was playing. So I didn't know what he was trying to do at the beginning. I was just like, okay, I'm just gonna make absolute zero as soon as possible, and hopefully that'll be good enough to win. That's basically what I did in game one. It was a pretty close game. I ended up winning, and then in game two, he actually, I have this on my Twitter, so we're gonna show this on the screen. He actually drew like the worst possible. It was like Double World Decree, Heavy Storm, Giant Trude, Mystical Space Typhoon, and then a trade-in or something. So he had like completely unplayable cards. So I ended up just beating him down with Armageddon Knight and Sangen to win. So it was a very anticlimactic second game, but I won the first round and I was like, wow, okay, I've already won. I was not expecting to win at all. So it was a great way to start the match, but there was a lot of issues with like how the tournament was going. And this was not really like the judges fault at all, but they had only assigned two judges to this entire tournament, which I'm imagining if they had 256 players, it would have been absolutely ridiculous. Two judges and it was super loud in there. So the judges still have to wear masks, I guess for COVID like related re reasons or whatever, which I'm surprised they still have to do that. But because it's Konami, you know, they're from Japan, they're probably a little bit more on the COVID side of things. They have to wear these masks. It's super loud. They're trying to co communicate with everyone. There's only two of them. One guy's trying to yell and we can't hear anything. We're like, what? We're like, what do you say? If he gets like 10 feet away from you, you can hear him. Otherwise, the four tables listening are like, what is he saying? We're like, I have no idea. So for the first few rounds, we had no idea what the dude was saying. We're just like trying to guess. Okay. Uh, and then the time is like, there's no timer up there. Like in the main event, 45 minutes counting down. He's like, it starts at 1236 or whatever. We're like, all right, 1236. Got to put our own timer down or like just try to remember when it's gonna end so that was kind of weird and it was kind of like that the entire time you never really knew when the round was gonna start when it was gonna end and then they were like yeah you're gonna get disqualified if you don't like sign in for your match because they didn't have slips for the first few rounds you actually had to go up to the second judge so one guy's the yeller guy and actually doing the judging by the way if you needed a judge you're like hello hello and there's you had to look all the way over the, around the place because if he's helping one guy that's the one judge there's nobody else the second guy you had to take your results to sign the slip, say who won all that stuff. Normally they like hand those out for the main event, but I guess they didn't have time to cut them up or whatever. So there was a gigantic line. Every time there was an the end of the round, you just have to wait for everybody to do it. So it took forever. So after we finished our match, we waited like another 20 minutes just to like get signed in and like signed up or whatever. Then we'd wait a probably like 30 minutes between each round. It, it felt really long and it was really hard to hear like whenever the next round started. I was paranoid the whole time I was gonna miss a round and uh, that's a foreshadowing for later <laughs> for what happened. So the next round I played another guy. He was not as like, so this first guy was super nice and chill. It's not that this guy wasn't nice, but he was definitely more serious about the tournament. Since I don't play a lot, you know, a lot of people are like main phase and they say all their you know, main phase, I'm doing this, I'm going to battle phase, you know, all that stuff. Half the time I don't do that and like if you're like a super serious like well you did this so that means that you're now in battle phase or whatever so i remember he called me on something i did with my graveyard or something and i was like oh this guy's super serious i got i got i need to like tighten it up or whatever so i was like okay from now on i gotta declare everything i'm doing so that was like i, I don't have a problem with him because like if you're there and you want to win i i'm kind of like just letting me do whatever is not really fair for you so once i realized that that was happening i decided just to make it like fair for the for the match and like 
a good experience for him because I know people don't necessarily want to be the guy who's like, say, oh yeah, you can't do that because of this. But if you don't, then you're like giving yourself less chance to win. So I decided, okay, I just got to be serious for this one. You know, you got to judge the guy. So that's the thing about playing IRL. That's kind of fun. You kind of like feel out what's the vibe of this match? Like, is this guy like super chill? And he's like, he's like, okay with anything. He's like down to just play casually, basically just in the tournament. Or is this guy like really trying to win? Do I need to buckle down? Is he down to chat during the thing? Or is he just like, it's all business, you know, he's summoning. He's not going to like talk with you about his Seattle Seahawks sweatshirt, which he was wearing. And I was starting to talk about Geno Smith, you know, West Virginia, baby, let's go. So once I realized that he was more serious, uh, I tried to be a little bit more serious. And guess what? He waxed me. I, I lost 2-0. The first one it kind of got waxed. The second one was a pretty close game. I was actually in control. He top decks dad, three darts in the grave, gets rid of my absolute zero. I did wipe his field, but he had the momentum at that point. So we ended up losing 0-2 or 1-1 one one now, which honestly, I'm not expecting to win a ton of matches, so I'm happy that it was a long game. We played like 40 minutes for two games, so or two matches. Or, no, for the match, two games, one match. You know what I mean? That was a fun. It was a fun match, but that was when I kind of realized, okay, there are people here. They're being serious. They're into this thing. So I just gotta like know who I'm playing before I keep going. Round three, I'm, I'm one and one at this point. I, I play the fairies deck. The fairies deck's pretty strong in Edison at the moment. I don't really understand how it works. At one point, E3 Yu-Gi-Oh tried to show me how that deck works and it was like one time and it was like a while ago. So I kind of forgot like what they're trying to do. I remembered eventually that Arch Lord Christia is kind of like the big bomb that they put on the field and you're just kind of screwed because it's a huge body with and you can't special summon. So I remember the first game of this game. This guy was super nice as well. I had Pachycephalo out, which was in my main deck, by the way. Everyone was like, why is that in your main deck? I was like, dude, I don't know. I net decked this from like three years ago. So I had I had Pachycephalo out. He couldn't really do anything. He ended up putting Jaugen on the field, which is another special summon lock. So we were just sitting there with, you know, not being able to special summon for a long time. Eventually he outed my Pachycephalo and he ended up beating me. And in the second round, I think I made it. I remember making a pretty big misplay in the second round. I don't know if it really would have mattered, but it definitely ended the game when I did. And I was like, crap, when I did, I was like, I'm not going to try and backtrack on it. It was probably the worst match I played in the entire day. So. That was not a great one. I felt I was like, dang, that sucks. And I thought about dropping after that. And I was like, you know what? I'll play until I have three losses, which it turns out they said they were only doing top eight of the 144. So with two losses, I was essentially out anyway, but I just wanted to keep playing for fun. So I played one more round, by the way, at this point, after three rounds, it's like 5.30. We played three rounds it was, or five or something. It was extremely late. Like they were all taking like an hour and a half on average. So no one else was really ready to go yet anyway with who I was with. And, you know, we we're probably going to go eat at some point. So I was like, I'll just stay in. So round four, I actually played a really nice guy. He was playing fairy as well. So I played back to back fairy duels. A lot of these people knew where I was, or at least this guy really knew. He's like, oh no. He's like, oh man, it's Ruxin or whatever. And I was like, yeah, what's up, man? I was like, you're probably lucky that it's me because you're going to win. But then I actually ended up taking this one. Did a 2 0 win against fairy, got my revenge against the fairy. Different guy, but he's actually really nice, really cool. So we are back at 500. I don't think we can possibly top, but I'm going to keep playing until maybe we lose our third one. So maybe round five, we might get up to three and two. That could be pretty impressive. I won 2-0 in this one, but there were some pretty good duels. Like it was definitely not a short, like quick 2-0 or anything. So I enjoyed it and uh, got me back to two and two. So I was like, I never actually won. By the way, this is the first time I'd ever won two matches in a single tournament that didn't involve a forfeit. So I know it's not the main event or anything, but I was like, oh, it's pretty good. It's the best ever, you know, a new record. So because of that, I decided I would stay in. I'd play one more round and see if I lost again. So I got a round five against a Vayu Turbo player, which a lot of people were playing Vayu Turbo and I hadn't seen it somehow. So I get up against this guy and this guy was actually hilarious. Like he had this really dry humor. I don't know if he knew who I was or not, but I, I just don't bring it up. They don't know who I am. And uh, he was just making some hilarious jokes the whole time. He was, I was just laughing the entire time. Um, I ended up actually 2 owing him because Vayu Turbo, from what I could tell, I mean, I haven't played against it a ton, is just summoning big synchro guys who have negated effects. So they're just basically big vanillas. And fortunately, my deck is like Ab Zero, 2500. If you destroy him, he destroys all your monsters. I have Caius who can just banish stuff off the field. I can bring out dad. So I, I never brought out dad in the entire tournament, by the way, just throwing that out there. But I, I can deal with big guys. It's not really a big deal. So I was able to do that. Not easily, I would say. I remember in, in game two of this one, I drew like nine straight spells and traps. And he also drew like nine straight with like a set value or something. So we were just looking at each other for the first like 10 minutes of the duel. Like, man, this is a good duel, huh? And I was like, yeah, awesome duel. But eventually I ended up winning because I I top decked a Caius and he had like a Blackwing. Uh, what's the one that just got the 25th anniversary? Blackwing armor master on the field. And I just tribute summon for Caius and banished it for a thousand and I could attack directly. So he just conceded and I won 2-0. So I played five matches in a row 
all of them were 2-0s. I got 2-0 twice, I 2-0 three times. It was kind of weird. I never went to game three. After this, it's like eight o'clock. Literally, I've played five rounds since one o'clock. It's almost eight o'clock. This has been the longest tournament ever. There's huge gaps between, you know, you got all the different times you got to go up and wait to submit your results and everything. I mean, they just needed more, uh, they needed more judges. I was going to say refs, judges. They actually added a third guy who told me he was a huge fan of the channel and he was really, really, really nice. So I was like, that's cool. And once he got there, it actually sped up a little bit because I mean, two guys, what are you going to do? They can do their absolute best and they have 144 people to deal with. So when he got there, it helped out. Finally, round six. This is where this is where it all fell apart. All right. We uh, we went to round six and we happened to be late. So we got disqualified. I was trying to remember back what I did after round five. So I won round five. I mean, it didn't go like that long. I think it maybe went 35 minutes, something like that. We were done pretty early. Uh, we submitted our results fairly fast because they actually had a slip by round five. So I was able to just turn it in. And maybe this is why round six started earlier than I was expecting. I walked over to like see what Aaron, AK Stasiato and all them were doing. They're playing some Go and I was talking to them. And I look over and I'm like, are those people at the Edison table already? And I, I won over there and they're already in the round. And I'm like, uh, have they already started? And they're like, yep, they, they, you missed it, man. And I was like, how? I was like, I was gone for 10 minutes. I don't know what happened. I still don't know how they started the round that fast. I asked everybody who I was sitting with, did you guys hear it? And they're like, nope, didn't hear anything. And another guy walked up while I was like, dang, I missed it. And he was like, are you effing kidding me? How? I didn't know. He was pissed. It was insane i was like oh man this guy is not happy but i personally was like it's eight o'clock i'm ready to go to be honest but i was like dang that's kind of a sad way to end i was on a two game win streak you know potentially could have got four and two that would have been really cool let's be honest i was probably gonna lose and go three and three so technically this was a loss i'm not counting it going three and two that's a winning record i was pretty happy with that but i was bummed i was like how did i miss this man so somehow i missed the sixth round i don't know how it happened i'm still unsure and i decided i wanted to go home that night like drive home super late so i wouldn't have been able to go eat with like sassiato and all them so i decided you know what it's probably better off that i just missed this anyway but it was kind of weird so after that I, I left i was feeling pretty good i was like three and two that's pretty awesome i'm i'm pretty excited that i did now, it's not like i killed it or anything but i won three matches i was very happy with it so this is a much different video than you normally get i know a lot of you guys might not care about this at all but i figured i'd put this here just so you guys know i went to indy i was there for when the exodia guy summoned exodia i was in round two against that guy who was super serious and they were like yeah exodia and it was all the way across the venue we could hear people roaring it was incredible this is very clean we got the other arm <laughs> and all five pieces have been assembled the legs the arms the head exodia obliterate <laughs> Unbelievable. Wow, the crowd goes insane. I did get to experience that. I played in the Edison tournament and I'm gonna show you guys some of my Edison cards throughout while I'm talking. So you guys can at least look at some really cool cardboard while I'm chatting this thing up. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content. Maybe like this, we'll see. I mean, I might be playing more Edison in the future. We'll have to find out. It's probably more likely than the main event, let's be honest. And uh, thank you guys for watching. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxer, Tomato Juice, Puffins of Doom, Ernesto Deanna, America Doyster, Supreme Stage 21, CJ, Liu Guan 62, Yu-Gi-Oh! Unboxed, and Natai Show, Ian Musa Jr. Barding, Robert F., Thomas McLean, and Changa Lang. Thank you guys for supporting the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.